Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Temp for the Chairman. For those of you that uh, don't uh, know about it or haven't watched it yet, this is where I take 10 questions from subscribers and answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, so uh, subscribers are the, uh, the part of the community that are kicking in extra money every month to enable us to do extra community content. So this show, Win Wins Hangar, um, also uh, a bunch of the other stuff we do, Jump Point, uh, which trickles down uh, to the general community base. So thank you very much subscribers for allowing us to do a lot of this extra sort of video content and communication. So let me just get straight to it um, here um, with my questions. So the very first question comes from uh, Stoge. When hiring NPCs to crew our ships, what degree of variation will there be between different NPCs? Will I be able to go out and find a skilled ship gunner for my freelancer? And if someone who's a great pilot but not a great gunner if I pay him to sit in the gunner seat for a while, will he slowly get better at it? So uh, there will definitely be variations between NPCs. Uh, we'll have some level of sort of uh, skill uh, for the NPCs, and probably uh, there will be some progression for the NPCs. So uh, if they fight uh, a lot of battles and they manage to be on the winning end of them, then they will actually get better. Um, and the cost of uh, like hiring the crew will be dependent on their sort of skill level. So you know you could go for a cheaper crew, but they may not be as good as a sort of veteran or elite crew. Um, so on that level, the NPCs will have some level of sort of uh, typical uh, RPG progression. Although obviously as a player, you yourself don't. So I guess the question is, if he does sit in the sit in the gunner seat for a while and manage to hit a few things, and you do all right, uh, then he will slowly get better at it. Okay, next question comes from CC Corp who asks, will there be any benefits for ejecting out of your ship before it explodes, like less of a financial loss, or will you be unable to abandon ship as said ship is burning down? So yes, there will be benefits for ejecting out of uh, a ship just before it explodes. Not all ships will have that capacity uh, or capability. Uh, the Hornet has it, the 300i will have it, but something like the Aurora, which is much more of a basic ship, doesn't have the ability to eject. Um, some of the bigger ships will have escape pods that if you get to before the ship goes out, um, you'll be able to get out before the sh ship goes up in a big fiery uh, uh, explosion. And the benefit of ejecting uh, rather than going up in explosion is that it sort of saves uh, a life, so to speak. So if you refer back to my death of a spaceman uh, write-up that I did a while ago, um, the concept in, in Star Citizen is that there's a progression in uh, your character's life. So it's, you, you don't always respawn at the same level of health, and as time goes on, um, your body sort of takes wear and tear. And so every time you, say, uh, get killed in a dogfight, uh, you'll end up waking up in a med bay. So think of it like Luke Skywalker and um, uh, The Empire Strikes Back. And uh, you know maybe you've got a bit of a prosthetic arm or you've got a scar here, and then after that happens so many times, your body just can't get sort of built back up or revived, and that character will um, pass away, and all your possessions and family name or whatever you want will pass on to your sort of uh, designated successor. The benefit of um, ejecting is that you sort of get to try and preserve a, a life, uh, which uh, is something you probably would want to would want to do, and um, you know we may or may not have some level of uh, you know. Maybe your medical bills are less because you don't have to get fixed up as much. Um, I guess it depends whether we have national health in, uh, in, uh, in our world. But we haven't made a decision on that particular aspect. But definitely you would want to eject before um, your ship blows up if you possibly can or have a ship um, that will give you that because it will give you an edge. And by the way, on the Aurora, you also, if it's about ready to go, you just would have to get out of your seat and go out the airlock uh, manually versus hitting an ejection button. Uh, okay, next question comes from Theus who says, I was wondering if there were any plans to let us design our own costumes for our characters in a manner similar to how we can design our own ships to be considered for implementation in the game. So, uh, well, definitely on the modding side, I think we'll, we would let people to be designing their own costumes for the characters. Um, we're definitely going to have a high level of customization uh, in terms of outfits and stuff that you can do for your character in the game. Um, so I guess those two things together uh, will sort of be blended. I mean, I think if we were going to let someone have their own costume in the game itself. In the Persistent Universe, we would have to moderate it just to make sure that it sort of abided by the, the quality standards and the technical standards that we would need. Um, which is kind of why we're doing like the next great starship, because we're having some teams build it, but it's to the standards that would fit in the game, and they would go from there. OK, next question comes from 
uh, Viperion, who asks, how do you, and CIG, define alpha testing? Most of us have alpha access, and most of us seem to be pretty unclear about what that actually means. Does CIG see us as primarily stress testers of mostly finished assets, or are we going to be actually testing the unfinished version of the game and bug hunting? You'll definitely be testing the unfinished version of the game because uh, we're sort of releasing the game in these uh, modules that are only part of the functionality of the final game. Uh, so, you know, the dogfight model of modules coming up before that we have the hangar module and we'll have some other ones like for the first person combat or on the planet side. Um, and so the, the primary point of having the community play it is for twofold. One, um, for people to sort of play it and, you know, we get a sense of like feedback in terms of, yes, this is working, no, this is not working, these are the things we would like to tweak. Um, so it's like a super massive focus group. Uh, and then there's stress testing, sort of uh, bug testing. So, so we have our own dedicated group of testers, but of course, on a game that was this big with that, you know, this many different things you can do, it's impossible, even if we had a testing department of uh, 200 people, to, to really cover it deep. Now, luckily, we have a testing department of 200,000 people at the moment. That uh, obviously makes a, a big uh, difference because you sort of just, the amount of people banging away at it means that we'll probably flush out most of the problems and or most of the bugs and most of the issues at a much earlier stage than you normally do in, the, in game development. So normally in game development, it only really goes super wide once the game's released and then it's already out there and, and uh, you know, then you start to see some things that you didn't even see in your own testing. So hopefully we'll be flushing that much earlier in our process, which is sort of why we have the whole early module and the whole alpha testing. So I would say that it's a combination of sort of feedback and stress testing uh, and figuring out, uh, you know, sort of finding maybe some bugs we haven't seen. Now, it doesn't mean that like once someone finds a bug in the community that um, you know, they write up a full bug report or anything like that, because that's probably not that practical with that many people. But what it does mean is that it's sort of a good uh, place to sort of find problems. And then we on the development side can sort of put our dedicated you know, engineers and our internal test st staff going, OK, well, that's a bug we need to fix. We didn't see that before. And, and so it just gives us a, a great um, head start, and we'll probably build in some sort of automated sort of bug report tool uh, at some point. It won't be on the dogfighting v1, but down the road it will. Um, okay, next question uh, comes from Azuvia, who asks, when we are in a fight, will the wreckage from another player become a navigational hazard to watch out for while we finish the fight? Um, so yes, the answer is yes, absolutely. So as the ship, uh, you know, ships blow apart, they, uh, you know, leave um, large chunks of uh, wreckage. Uh, so we're not going to have, like, you blow up a ship and it just explodes in a fireball and it goes away. So uh, sometimes you'll see a big explosion because, the, say, the power plant went critical or whatever. But a lot of times it can just be like a, you know, sparking, um, badly scarred, um, Hornet that's sitting there floating dead in space, and uh, you'll have to watch out because if you hit, hit it while you're flying around, it will, uh, you know, you will do it'll do some damage to you. Um, okay, next question comes from uh, Matu, uh, who asks, "Will Star Citizens take full advantage of six and eight core CPUs? What about more than eight or sixteen gigabytes of RAM, thirty-two gigabytes, for instance?" Yes, uh, the game will definitely take. Uh, advantage of uh, multi-core CPUs. Uh, CryEngine already has multi-threading in it, so it runs the renderer uh, in a separate um, render thread. So it runs a re render in a separate CPU thread. It runs the physics in actually several uh, CPU threads. Uh, animations run on another CPU thread. Main game loops in another game thread. Um, I think we've got networking in another thread. So uh, in general, um, the engine's already fairly multi-threaded, and uh, longer term, we're sort of working at adding and doing more of that um, to take advantage because that's the that's just the way um, you know Monday PCs are going. So it's it's less about faster clock speed and more about more CPUs. Memory definitely. I mean, you know, more memory the better. Uh, we'll be able to pre-cache more, and you'll have uh, like higher resolution textures. Uh, so if you're if we're running low on the memory side, uh, you'd probably uh, reduce down the textures. Um, say, whereas if you had 16 or 32 bits, you may get them at the full 4K resolution in some cases, or there'll be less um, disk loading. Like we'll be able to pre-cache more into memory. So I would definitely recommend having a multi-core CPU and uh, lots of memory. I mean, most of my machines all have 32 gigs or more 
Um, I'm not saying you have to because there's a lot of developments. We have lots of applications open at once, and uh, you know, um, usually we've got six, six core or eight core machines here. Um, okay, uh, next question comes from uh, Inni, who asks, "Will we be able to use inertia in order to advance in some direction to avoid using fuel?" So yes, definitely, uh, you uh, will 100% be able to. So the uh, flight mode uh, has the sort of fully sort of controlled uh, flight. Um, that's sort of the intelligent flight system that we've talked about. And then you'll also be able to change um, the flight, uh, sort of change the modes on it, so you can just change your orientation without changing your actual velocity vector. And then also you'll be able to change your velocity vector without changing your orientation. Uh, and that will all be easily available from your sort of flight controls. So you'll be able to do all sorts of uh, maneuvers where you can start out in a sort of kind of computer controlled, um, you know, flight controlled manner with full fly by wire, and then you turn off aspects of it and, and move around. So it should be fun. I'm actually kind of interested to see how people uh, do with uh, the dog fight uh, when we get put it in people's hands because I, I, it's going to have a lot more ability and options than any uh, game I've done before. Um, okay, so Crevator asks My question is Will jump points tend to be near the edges of solar systems, or will we have the possibility of dangerous jump points such as coming out near a sun or an asteroid field? Yeah, no, jump points are going to be kind of all over the place. Uh, you know, I think our fiction is that the jump points are sort of create, created by a different space anomaly. And, uh, you know, so sometimes that could be close to a sun. And uh, also, you know, maybe there's one near an asteroid field and that's more of a navigation hazard. So it's going to sort of depend. There'll be different types of jump points. Um, ones that can sort of sustain bigger ships, one that can only take smaller ships. Um, and so, you know, think of them like mountain passes. So some mountain passes are easy and some are more dangerous than others. Okay, next question uh, comes from Flashbolts. Uh, will it be possible to rent ships either from an MPC corp or between players? I would say uh, probably. So we, we already have in the game, like in part of the design, we're anticipating that potentially you can work for hire. So you can hire another player or another NPC to do jobs for you and let them use your ship. You definitely will be able to lend ships to people, so it makes sense that you should be able to sort of rent some ships too. Kind of like it is in real life, so yes, I would think it is gonna be possible. Uh, okay, last question of the 10 here uh, is player two up. Can we get a close-up look tour of the model behind your desk? So yes, I think we definitely can. Um, so to let you know, this is the Snake here um, model from uh, the Wing Commander movie. And it's actually not a model that you saw per se in the, uh, in the, in the film. Uh, it was built by the art department on the film as a reference for the 3D modelers uh, to build. Um, their 3D model, which is what you would have seen in the film, uh, modeled out. Um, and we actually used Maya, uh, uh, well, basically the very beta of Maya, even before Maya 1.1. Um, for the Wing Commander movie. Um, and uh, after I finished the film, I had it shipped out from um, Pinewood, uh, which is where, we, where it was built, and um, had it a digital anvil, and now have it here at uh, Cloud Imperium. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. I, I, quite, I quite like it. Um, so hopefully you guys do too. All right, so uh, thanks very much uh, for joining me for uh, this uh, episode of 10 for the Chairman. Um, hopefully you found some of the questions interesting and lightning. And again, thank you to all the subscribers out there and thank you to all the backers and community in general for enabling us to uh, make the game of my dreams and I think the game of pretty much uh, hopefully your guys' dreams, I, I would assume it would be. Uh, but we're having a lot of fun. Uh, this is a totally different way to make games and uh, it's a pretty brilliant way to make games. So anyway, I'll see you on the next episode of Time for the Chairman. Thank you. Bye.